if you take a break from teaching around sex education or things that are more vulnerable, should it be difficult to come back in? Is there something wrong with you? I'm here with Reed Mahalka from readaboutsex.com and Sex Geek Summer Camp. And this is Kathy Rachuli sitting next to me from theintimacydojo.com. And when I have the green Sex Geek Summer Camp shirt on, this is usually business advice aimed at sex educators and educators in general. Yes. So the other day I was complaining to Reed about how if I don't teach, um, if I don't run events for a couple months, the next time I do it, I feel really um, awkward and ashamed around talking around sexuality. Like it's like, it's almost like when I've been doing it regularly, I feel very confident. I just always feel awkward, but and anxious, but like I feel pretty good about it. I'm in the flow of that. But if I don't do it for a little while, I'm all like, oh, this is incredibly awkward, and it's hard. It's almost like I don't know. Like if you have. I, I have days when I'm all cold and cuddled in my robe and I don't want to get in the shower. Like, it's hard to transition. It feels like I have to transition. It's it's hard. It's challenging for me. And Reed was saying he had a similar experience. Well, not similar, but like... No, you projected that on me. Oh, I thought you said you also feel awkward when you haven't been um, for a while. Well, I can feel... Like, if I haven't taught a workshop in a while, mm-hmm. I feel rusty. Okay. But it sounded like you were talking about something different. Oh, like taking like a break and coming back. you deserve to come back and teach. Um, I feel like I'm not good at it. I feel like, well, who am I to say this stuff? Who am I to teach this? So, and also, it feels vulnerable to talk about sexuality. There's the shame and. And when you're teaching regularly, it feels less vulnerable. Um, it feels less shameful, less rusty. Okay, so so for me as a married, I'm like, what's what's the difference between rusty, feeling rusty, feeling ashamed? imposter syndrome it sounds like there's a bunch of things going mm-hmm. on yeah well I just I, I'm curious if other people experience this too like if I've been teaching if I've just been to Sex Week Summer Camp and I'm teaching an event and I'm teaching another event a couple a week or two later like it's all a nice easy, easy flow and I'm in that flow of it so I still feel like I want to do a good job I feel anxious but I'm not feeling like I'm transitioning from and I have a corporate job so I, I teach you know I work around people that are not um, talking about sexuality all the time. So like I'm stepping out of one world to another often back and forth. Okay. Um, but I think if I'm if I'm too long in the, the everyday world and try to come back to teaching sex ed or, or doing sexual education to help people, um, it feels it feels like there's resistance, there's fear. I mean it, it... And we're we're more talking in this video like extemporaneously, like like off the cuff about this topic. So I'm curious. It, it sounds like it's just kind of like if you were gonna go do sports or or exercise, like you need to warm up so that the workout goes smoother, and that when you're teaching regularly, you're you're just warmed up. You're already in your groove, mm-hmm. so you don't need to like, like warming, stretching before a thing. Always sucks. Yeah. Because the warm up to get to where you're warm from coming cold, like that is just it's clunky. It's 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 it always feels that way. Yeah, and part of the reason I'm sharing what I'm going through is because I think a lot of times we don't talk about these things and. We all feel alone, so I'm wondering if other people feel this way. Um, I'm not really sure. Like, it's hard to get into the warm up. It's hard to get into the. If I haven't been talking about um, sex positivity for a while, mm-hmm. I find it hard to. I think because so much of our society is silent around sex positivity, and we're not talking about. I have a, an abuse background, so I have a lot of shame still. There's layers of it in there around sexuality. So I think when I go back in to teach it, I really care about helping people find better ways to connect with each other and to release shame. And it the it feels like the layers that I've cleared kind of partly grow back up. Like the, the ice, the, the yeah, water Yeah, chip the water, yeah. Yeah, so okay. it feels like each if I wait too long, the longer I wait, the harder it is to get back in. I mean, that just begets to me the idea of like what are your warm-up protocols like before you teach do you do a facebook live on tuesday before you teach on friday or saturday like what are you doing to crack the ice or to thaw the ice or defrost the turkey right to 
And how much to, do you need for to come back in? Like, what are your what are your pregame routines so that when it comes to game time, you feel like you're in a good space? Because if you're if you're teaching workshop after workshop, uh, once you're warmed up, that momentum is just carrying you through the the rest of of, of the the workshops. So you just don't notice it. The challenge as humans is we think when we're warmed up, we blame ourselves for, for being cold or forever getting cold. Yes, I do. And so now you're beating yourself up in a way that, that, that is very human, but not very useful. Mm. So the other thing that, that we did mention before we recorded this video is the idea of, I don't think you've taken enough time off of not teaching to actually learn how you go back in and out. So so any of us who are like, oh, I'm gonna take, I mean, I took a year off from teaching because of my accountability process, which you can check out at readaboutsex.com, or at, um, tinyurl.com, read accountability. And coming back into teaching was really difficult for me, but it wasn't difficult because I hadn't been teaching for a year. It was difficult because I had learned a, to pay attention to a bunch of new things and I was then practicing paying attention to them while I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a lot of feels um, that were very different than, you know, oh, I'm teaching this workshop, I haven't taught this workshop in a year and I forgot this whole part that's really fun to teach because I wasn't in my, my regular patter. Mm -hmm. Um, like trying to recite a poem that you memorized, but you haven't recited it in a long <laughs> You're like, time. like, oh no, what was that? Like, I'm going to forget the part about the... Yeah. It's not just remembering it. You have to re-remember it. Um, but if you're a performer who does spoken word and you've had that experience a bunch of times, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I have to re-remember the thing I used to remember all the time. Give me a second and it'll come back to me. Yeah. And you don't necessarily panic. And you probably practice the poem before you get up on stage, uh, unless people are taking requests or something like that. L look at me talking about spoken word like I know it. I don't. <laughs> but, but as an analogy, yeah. right? Um, so I think there's also the how much practice have you had at dipping in and out over extended periods? Mm -hmm. Well, and maybe just normalizing that other people feel awkward at it too versus... My head is I should be I, I shouldn't need this I shouldn't need a warm up time I should be just fine I should be as smooth as I was the last time that I taught even if the last time I taught I'd been in a, a, a doing a bunch back yeah. to back it has a lot to to do with like how we kick our own ass we're very good at that excellent yeah we so we'd love to know what you think and what you experience please leave comments below and uh, we'll talk to you soon bye.